Hello, welcome back to my blog, Edis English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today, we are going to discuss some of the key features of poetry, or rather, how to understand a poetry. From the origin of language, poetry is like that of a little bit of music or a musical presentation of our tone. We all know that our mimicry, our traditions of uttering the words or following the sounds is the very origin or the very birth of our languages. The complicated languages as it developed with the human civilization, our understanding towards that language becomes complex. But the tone or the musicality or the rhythmic pattern of the sound still haunts us. That's why for the aesthetic sense, the literature is born. And the literature that arrests our mind, that appeals to our heart, is the sum total of our presentations that we call the oral traditions of literature, the epical literature, as well as the literature which are constantly being evaluated and written in different forms, dramas, novels, essays, and different kind of writing styles are also being followed. We are all interested in all these literary caliber or all these literary outputs. As a student of literature, we are obviously attached to all of these forms. Poetry is to be involved in our studies, if not with the mirth, with the joy, for academic purposes we also read poetry. It is better to understand poetry in its truest term. To understand a poetry, you have to be a poet, simply. If you don't have the planning or understanding of the sounds of the words or its intricacies, then you will fail to understand the very basics of poetry. Poetry from the aesthetic sense, it can be termed, it can be defined that it comes from within. It is spontaneous what flow of powerful emotions that Wordsworth has told it, that it comes like that of a fountain. And the origin of the mountain is the very heart of us. From that mountain, there comes the fountain and the fountains are the very words that oozes from the mountain top. So, in understanding a uh, poetry, you must have to think uh, two basic things. In understanding a poem, you have to think twice before you venture into that poetry. Basically, you have to understand who is the writer and what is the very style or the very uh, technicality of that poem. Uh, you can uh, get the simple rhymes to ballad forms to epical poem, heroic couplet, there is also sonnet, there is free verse. So, different kind of poetry and different kind of presentation can be divided into two parts. That is a kind of poetry which is subjective one and, and a kind of poetry which is objective one. Poetry is obviously subjective because uh, the poetry delivers the very message of the poet. So the relationship between the poet and the uh, poetry is very close one. So in the very poetry we can understand the very mechanics or the very ideology or the very way of thinking of the poet. So it is a subjective art. There is a kind of uh, poetry that we can also find out a kind of objectivity. This kind of objectivity or where the poetry has been stated from the uh, planks of the other corner from the poet's heart. So the poet speaks differently uh, from his way of thinking. This kind of objective writing or objective poetry can be found in a kind of uh, epical writing, uh, in a kind of poetry called drama dramatic verses. So, these kind of verses, uh, dramatic monologue in Browning or uh, in the dramatic text where a lot of the poetry is there. In the ancient dramatic formats, we can find out many of the lines that are written in poetic format. So, these are objective kind of writing. 
So first of all, whenever you take a new poem, you must have to understand where from it is origin and who the author is. What is the author missing here or is the author present here? If author is there, then it is subjective. If author is missing in this poetry, then it is objective poetry. You can locate that subjectivity or objectivity by the very genre of the uh, writing. Uh, most of the in a dramatic text you will find objectivity in most of the uh, separate forms or anthologies in a collection of poems you will find subjective kind of poetry but in dramatic verses in dramatic monologues uh, you can find out uh, the very dramatic part or objectivity of the writing In taking a poem, all you have to decipher the very rhyme pattern or the very scansion or the prosodic metrical divisions or so. So in prosody, you have to identify what is the meter, what are the numbers, how it is in rhyming pattern, two syllabic or rather three syllabic, how it is rhyming, end rhyming or rather initially or medial rhyming. So there are different kind of concession formats, you have to understand them. Most of the time in Petrachan sonnets or in sonnets general, you can find out most of the lines in iambic pentameter because there comes the musicality. You can also find out the rhyming pattern in which lines it repeats. Is it the first line repeating in second line or is it alternatively rhyming? So these are the rhyme patterns you have to understand. So, First, you have to understand the subjectivity and objectivity. Second, you have to identify where from the poetry, the very chart of the poetry. You have to find out the very concession on rhyme pattern of the poem. And the next, the notable point or notable features that you will search for is the very rhetorical devices that it has used. The poem, as you know, is an emblem of languages, is a, is a kind of uh, emblem of uh, or the beautification of the words. Words that come straight forward are words that have been delivered in age which do not cover the poetic essence. The poetic essence is like that of a beautification of the word arts. So how the word arts has been delivered? There are different mechanisms, different rhetorical terms like that of ornament. Uh, you will find out many of the ornaments in poetry, in kind of association, in kind of differences, in kind of sounds. They, these are the types by, on which based different rhetorics are being formed and different meanings and different explanations are there. So you have to locate the very rhetorics and note them down and find out the exact meaning of the words uh, and the different associated meanings with that. After finding the rhetoric, you will concentrate on the theme of the poem. The theme of the poem that you will find must encompass three or four basic things. First of all, author's own personal liking or disliking. Second of all, the social panorama or the social environment by which the very uh, poetry has been written, the very subject matter of the poetry has been stated or underneath. This point is obviously uh, any end message or rather any striking message uh, the poem delivers or so. If it is any striking features that makes the point epical one, uh, you have to locate those points minutely. In, in epical writing, in epical poetry beats, in Ramayana, Mahabharata or in Iliad and Odyssey, in most of these epical writing, you will find out a heroic verses and the gallantry, the epical features that you will find out. The same features has been followed in Beulf, in Paradise Lost. So these are the epical qualities are universal one, universal qualities are being exhibited. You can have the meaning of this text clear if you understand the very cultural and universal qualities of humanity. Otherwise, encompassing all these uh, epical texts is quite difficult one. In later half of the poetry, in many of the poems of 
the Caroline age as well as in Georgian period, uh, you will find uh, many of the prose or in modern poetry that T.S. Eliot's uh, The Westland or the like of this poem. Uh, these are all epical in that sense that it, it makes a, a societal uh, panorama as, is, as its backdrop and it states many a thing uh, directly and it states many a thing indirectly. So reading all these poems is not going through word by word but also going through or reading through the line by line of the environment of the society, panorama of the society. Uh, so society beyond society you cannot comprehend a single line of this poem. So you must have to be a political student as well as social student to get through all these poems. If I am instructing too much about reading, how to read a poem, the very mouth of reading a poem should have been cut. Last of all, one thing is very prime to understand a poem is that very interest of the words. If you follow the words, if you understand the very rhythm of the poem, both inner rhythm as well as outer rhythm, outer rhythm of sounds, inner rhythm of uh, core of the lines or the inner meaning, then you can uh, get the full interest of the poem and you will venture further reading this text. And especially one instruction that I like to deliver to the students who are, who are studying English as a second language, that understanding a poem uh, comes prime factor to them, uh, but they must have to uh, read the poem aloud. So to get the very sounds of the uh, words or the sounds of the poem attracted to their uh, audibility. And as they hear the sounds attractive, uh, so the theme should drag them on. Otherwise, a perfect reading of the poem, uh, if there is imperfect reading of the poem, it is quite difficult to get into the core of the interest. So, uh, reading a text in its full connotation, in its full uh, sounds, in its full rhythmic pattern is very essential. In that way, I can instruct you that while you are reading English poem, don't try to follow any other artificial accent that you cannot carry with. Just follow your own instinct, just follow your own accent and rectify them as, as you can possibly do. Uh, don't impose too much burden on the listening of a sound or uttering of a sound because it will uh, put you into a difficult situation. English is now a vast language and it encompasses whole of the world. So you cannot be so obsessed with the root of the language. Uh, there are so many of the variations of the English and Indian English is one of them. So you should better follow Indian English and try to imitate all this. And by this way you can build up your own confidence. I think you have gone through all the technicalities of the reading of the poem and it will help you a little bit. And if any difficulty in reading of the poem or how to read a poem, you can just pop up here and ask me a question. I will try my best to give you an answer. Thank you. Bye-bye. Like, share and obviously subscribe.